I can hear some listeners wondering, well, but Brian, you, you must not have read all these Old Testament passages oh, you'd where be the God character <laughs> does things that seem violent. I don't know. Yeah. I was just reading uh, today, I think, or yesterday. I think it's First Samuel 12, the story of Nathan confronting David. 15. 15. And, uh, and then it says that God struck the child of David and Bathsheba mm. and it later dies. Like, does God, it seems like this text is saying that God sh- strikes children with illnesses. Okay, well, let, let's start with the uh, the Saul passage. Um, that's 1 Samuel 15. And let's just, let's, let's be pointed about it. Let's see what the passage says. The passage says that, <clears throat> that Samuel tells Saul to go annihilate the Amalekites. Men, women, children, and babies. There's four categories. And, wh- and it gives you the answer why. Why? Because centuries earlier, the Amalekites had refused aid to Israel as they were moving from Egypt to Canaan. Okay, so stick with me here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Bible is saying, the Bible is telling a story. Let's put it that way. The Bible is telling a story about a Hebrew judge prophet named Samuel in the name of Yahweh telling the first king of Israel, King Saul, to go commit genocide against the Amalekites because of something that had happened four centuries earlier. And that he and that they and specifically they're told to show no mercy, no pity. You kill men, you kill women, you kill children, you kill babies. I mean, they didn't even, I mean, they made a distinction between children and babies. All right. I was thinking wow. about that. Yeah. All right. So now we stand and we look at that and we go, what, what, what do I do with that? Well, we can do a lot. Let's let's play with it. Let's start with this. Let me ask you this question. If God told you to kill babies, would you? <laughs> no, no. I would really question that it was God. I was hearing God. There's only yeah. one answer to that question. That's yeah. Perfect. And that is no. Under, I'm not going to kill babies. I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you could say it for a lot of ways. You could say, you could say, I, I, God would never say that. Well, but that's the story we're reading. So that's what we're working on. You could say, well, I, I don't trust myself to discern God that well. well. Okay, that's fine. Or I could, but I could just say, God, if I knew it was, if God came and said, Brian's on kill babies, I said, God, if you want to kill babies, you're going to have to kill them yourself. I'm not going to because you gave me a conscience and that would violate my conscience. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. But this creates the problem. And, and that's, this is the problem we're talking about right now. Okay. Mm. So we all know, I mean, come on. Do people see this or do they only hear it? Is this a, just only an audio? Oh, they'll see it. They'll, they'll see it. it. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Look at my, I hope I look okay. Uh, no, you look great, man. You look really good. Okay, so <laughs> so this is the problem. You know, and you know that you know that killing babies is wrong. Okay, killing a killing a whole race of people, men, women, children, babies, is called genocide. That's a war crime. You'll end up in the Hague for that, right? You just, the Nuremberg trials situation here. Mm -hmm. You know that's wrong, but you've got a problem because you have a text, and this isn't the only one, but this is one example, where where the Bible tells a story of someone in the name of Yahweh telling someone else, go kill all these people. Now, you have three ways you can deal with it. And I've really thought about this for years now. And there's only three. You have three choices. You may not like any of the three. Pick your poison then. But here's the first choice you can make. You can say, well, let's see. I think I'm going to question the morality of God or how we understand morality with God. That God has exceptional morality. That yes, ordinarily to kill babies is wrong. But when God says it's okay, it's okay. Some people make that move. I consider that, first of all, I can't do that. I can't do that because it violates my conscience. I know that killing babies is wrong, even if God says so. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other problem with that is that leaves the door open for future atrocities. 
Yeah. And it happened. I mean, this is what happened in um, 16, I forgot the exact year, 1620 something, maybe, maybe 1620. I can't remember the exact date. The Mystic Massacre in Connecticut when the English colonists murdered 700 of the Pequod tribe, mostly women and children, for their cultivated land. And they told themselves, by reading passages like First Samuel 15 and Joshua, uh, well, I, I, this is God's will. They're like the Canaanites and we're like the Israelites, and so it's okay. Um, when, when you say, well, if God tells you to kill babies, it's okay, you've left the door open for atrocities. So I personally can't make, you can question the, your understanding of morality. That, if that's your option, okay, but you're making me nervous. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can question is the immutability of God. That is the unchangeable nature of God. When we say that God is immutable, we mean that God doesn't mutate, that God doesn't change over time. But some, that's their move. They say, well, this is something God used to do, but over time, God changed. He doesn't do that anymore. There are people that actually give that answer. Um, yeah. I can't do that either. So that leaves one more option, and that is... Why is that a problem, just to put a pin on well, it? Well, I think because... First of all, because I'm just a classic theist, 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 too informed by the patristic tradition to play that game. I think if if God is subject to change, then what is the foundation of our faith? Then the very ground beneath my feet is moving and unstable. Mm -hmm. So I confess the immutability of God, that God doesn't change. But something does change. But I'll get to that. I'll save that for a moment. Uh, I think what we have to question is, our reading of scripture. How do we under, what is it we are reading here? Are we reading um, a God who's commanding genocide or are we reading the inspired, I can use that word, inspired telling of Israel's story of coming to know the living God. But along the way, assumptions are made. God meets them where they are, but they're still going to have assumptions. So if it looks like God might be changing somewhat through the course of the grand story that the Bible tells, well, it's a lot like what, what we might think of as, of as the most obvious fact in nature. And that is that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and it happens every single day, except that's not true. It looks to me, it looks to everyone for all the world like the sun is rising up over the eastern horizon, moving throughout the sky throughout the day and setting in the west every evening, except none of that's true. Mm -hmm. It's not the sun that's moving. It's we're the ones who are moving. I mean, imagine the first people that had the nerve to go, I've been thinking. <laughs> yeah. Bring me out. I don't think the sun's moving. I think we are. Yeah. Heretic. <laughs> yeah, he got excommunicated. <laughs> Yeah, but, but what's guy. happening is the Bible itself is chronicle, chronicling Israel's journey toward discovering God as fully revealed in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus is the, is the perfect word of God. The Bible is the penultimate word of God. Mm -hmm. And Christ is the judge even of Scripture. And see, this is, this, people labor under a delusion that, Let's, we'll just say the Old Testament, that the Old Testament is univocal. It's not. Ask the Old Testament, does God desire ritual blood sacrifice? Well, I mean, the priests in Leviticus say yes. Moses mm -hmm. will say yes in the Torah. But the psalmists and the prophets begin to come along and say, I'm not so sure about that. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Psalm um, 40, I'll just read it here. I mean, I can show you verses in Leviticus where it says... Sacrifice for sin is required day by day. And now listen to what the psalmist says. Um, in sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. Mm. And then later, Hosea will say, speaking in the name of Yahweh, um, be, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Yeah. So the Bible doesn't stand above the story it tells, but is fully immersed in it. The Bible itself is on a journey to, to discover the true and perfect word of God, which is Jesus Christ. And so, I mean, 
You may not like that answer, but what one do you like better? Hmm. <laughs> that God is in recovery from a violent past? Or that, you know, sometimes God just says kill babies, and when God says to do it, it's okay? Mm -hmm. So just to, if we now want to use that to figure out the Samuel story, using that third option of rethinking our reading, would it be something like, okay, Saul and company really want the land that the Amalekites have. What's the best way to do that? Well, tell everyone that God told me to do it. Yeah. And come up with a good reason, like, oh, yeah, they did a bunch of bad stuff in the past. And then can you write that in our special books? <laughs> and then, so, <laughs> I mean, that to me is more likely than, oh, now I have to work in child killing into my concept yeah, of God. Right, right. Exactly. We, we don't, as Christians, we do not get to read the Old Testament independent of Christ. 